Question number 19 involves solving this limit, and it's a limit equal to zero, so it's a local behavior limit. So when I plug in zero, and we should always substitute in the limit to, to evaluate it, we end up with zero in the numerator. I end up with one minus zero minus one, so we end up with zero over zero. Now, there's no algebraic manipulations, and we really don't need it because 0 over 0 indicates that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so we have to have the condition to apply L'Hopital's, but we do. So as we apply L'Hopital's rule, we end up with this. So x goes to 0. We end up with 8x over e to the 4x times 4 minus 4 and then we can now try to evaluate this so when we evaluate this we end up with 0 and then we end up with e to the power of 0 which is 1 so we end up with 4 minus 4 so again we end up with 0 0 so we haven't aren't able to evaluate it but we have the condition to apply L'Hopital's again so applying L'Hopital's a second time we end up with 8 over 4e to the power of 4x and then times by 4 again because of the chain rule we end up with this expression the minus 4 differentiates to 0 and then we try to evaluate this limit again in this case we end up with 8 over e to the 0 is 6 is 1 so we get 8 over 16 simplifies to 1 half so our solution is b Number 20, this problem is asking about uh, the twice differentiable increasing function. It tells us g of 0 is 20 and g of 10 is 220. And which of the following is true in the interval? Okay, so first thing is I'm just going to sketch this graph. There's 20 at 10, you know, it's up way up here at 220. Okay, so it's good to get a, a sense of what this graph looks like. And it's an increasing function, and must we're looking for what must be true. Okay, so what that means is we're looking for inconsistencies. Okay, so we're looking to see if we can show that these statements are false. Okay, so we're looking for inconsistencies. So I'm just going to draw, it's, it's an increasing function, it's twice differentiable, which means it's smooth. So it's an increasing function, maybe I'll draw it something like that. And I'm going to look for some inconsistency. So it says here, g prime equals zero for time, some time interval. Now that could be true, we could have a flat spot on here and still be increasing. However, it, we can easily draw it so it has no flat spots. So this one, we have to rule out. B is g prime equals 20 for some interval t, some for, from some t in the interval. Okay, so what this is actually alluding to is the mean value theorem. So this is differentiable, therefore smooth and continuous, so we can apply mean value theorem. And when we actually calculate the average slope between these two points, we'll see that the average slope is 2 plus 200 over plus 10, or the average slope is equal to 20, and that they're saying that the instantaneous slope is also equal to 20 at some point. Well, that would be true based on the mean value theorem. In this, in this case, we can apply the mean value theorem because it's differentiable. That's a condition for mean value theorem. And we know that if the average, so, so by mean value theorem, the average slope must occur in the interval. Okay, so it must happen. The average slope must be, must occur in this, in the interval 
between you know neg zero and ten. And we can see clearly that the average slope of this line here, there could be a tangent. Not to to the drawing this, but it could be a tangent here, it could be another tangent there. It is possible that this is the case, and because it's smooth and continuous, it has to happen at least once. So the answer is B. C we can rule out because it says the second derivative equal to zero. That means there must be there is an inflection, but I could easily draw an example where this is strictly increasing, but no inflection. Okay, so we can rule out C. Okay, so that concave up or concave down is strictly increasing but it does not have an inflection and g double prime is greater than zero well that's we could draw that case so it is possible but again we can find an uh, example where it contradicts so it's inconsistent so we're looking for contradictions or inconsistencies well, we found them in all three of those but in b we can use the mean value theorem to verify that B is in fact true.